Hey everyone, Charlene Ortiz here. Um, I wanted to do a video sharing my story of dealing with fibromyalgia. Um, basically, when I first started to feel the symptoms and how I finally came to uh, um, being diagnosed and how I, I deal with it now in my everyday life. Um, I have my fan on right now, so I hope it's not making too much background noise, but um, because when I put the studio lights on, it, it, it's really hot <laughs> and um, it makes me hot. But anyway, so I wanted to do this video because I thought it would um, really help a lot of people that are uh, number one, um, dealing with some of the early symptoms of fibromyalgia and wondering, you know, if maybe that could be what's going on. Um, of course, this is just my personal story. Um, don't diagnose yourself based on what my symptoms were. Um, that's strictly um, for your doctor to do. Um, number two, um, just to, um, you know, for people to, to relate to my story. I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that suffer from fibromyalgia or any type of chronic condition where um, for a long time you knew something was wrong but you just you know couldn't find a doctor that could properly diagnose you or even a doctor that would listen to you so um yeah i just wanted to share it just to um, encourage others you know that you're not alone um there's so many of us that are going through similar battles although it can feel so isolating um, when we're in the midst of um, intense pain excruciating pain and we feel like the people around us don't really understand um, how bad it is. Um, so anyway, um, for me, I think my problems may have started, um, or I think that what made me more vulnerable or susceptible to developing fibromyalgia was having the uh, partial pancreatectomy that I had when I was 11 because I had a tumor in my pancreas. Um, part of my pancreas was removed, my gallbladder, a portion of my small and large intestine. I believe a portion of my stomach was removed. And so um, I believe that could, could have been a huge factor that made me susceptible to developing fibromyalgia um, along with other events and other you know, conditions that um, I, I dealt with you know, as, as I got older and the years went on. And the reason I feel that way is because um, fibromyalgia is, is thought to have something to do with uh, low serotonin levels. And that's why a lot of people that develop fibromyalgia are sometimes put on antidepressants to help le um, level out their serotonin, balance out their serotonin levels. And 90% of serotonin is found in your gut. And so it's not uncommon for people that have digestive issues to develop this condition um, on top of, you know, other incidents or injuries or what have you that might have happened throughout their life. And I do want to do a, a video um, in the future more specific on um, what they feel fibromyalgia might um might stem from, like what could possibly cause it, although that they don't know for sure, they just have theories. Um, so I think that initially um, kind of set me up, you know, to be someone that could, could develop it more than the average person. Um, and then after my surgery, um, I did have health problems, obviously, with my digestion, um, keeping my weight up, stuff like that. And then in my um, early 20s, I got into two car accidents. And um, after the sec second car accident, I was never really the same. Well, that was when I was living in the San Francisco Bay Area, and um, after that, we moved, shortly after the accident, we moved to Ohio. I say, well, maybe like a year after the accident, not, not that quickly after, but we, we moved to Ohio, because um, that's where my family is, and that's where I, I wanted to go back to school. So, we were there for uh, three and a half years, and towards the end of our residency in Ohio, I started to feel a lot of muscle pain and, and aching, like that adult ache, um, you know, something of flu-like symptoms um, and some fatigue. But it wasn't that severe. 
I thought maybe I was just exercising too much because I'm a personal trainer. Uh, maybe I'm pushing myself too much at work. Maybe I'm working too much. Um, I, I couldn't really figure out why I was feeling that way because I couldn't think of anything that I had done, anything that had happened to me for me to you know, feel that kind of soreness. I hadn't changed my workout, um, hadn't fallen and hurt myself, like nothing like that. So I kind of dismissed it and just, you know, pushed through and went to work and did, did my daily activities and, and figured, oh, you know, it'll, it'll go away. You know, it'll get better. I'm probably just tired and stressed out and whatever. It, it'll start to go away. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you listening to um, this this right now are saying I can completely relate to that That's exactly how it started for me uh, but everyone's different everyone's experience with fibromyalgia and their um, the symptoms that they experience um, are going to be um, somewhat different so anyway um, we were in Ohio for three and a half years and then we decided to move back to California because the with the last winter that we lived through in Ohio, just um, it, it really messed me up. I, I, I was really feeling that that muscle ache, ache and soreness. Um, I felt like it was just exacerbated by the cold. And again, I thought, well, maybe because it's cold and, you know, when you're cold, you kind of, you know, tighten up a little bit. Um, trying to keep warm and maybe that's why I, I, I got I just I couldn't figure out what's wrong with me So I thought well, maybe you know moving back to California will be really good for us um, I was much happier in California. I never really cared for Ohio Although it is a beautiful place to live. There's nothing wrong with Ohio. It just you know wasn't for me So I thought well once we move back to California and get on our feet over there, you know, we'll I'll, I'll be okay This will go away so we moved and uh, we had a uh, really bad car accident on the way there. Um, we were hauling a U-Haul trailer with a um, SUV and Nissan Pathfinder. And we were um, going down a, a mountain um, in Utah and the winds were really, really strong. And they started blowing the trailer and it um, fishtailed. And basically the SUV that my husband was driving um, turned over like twice and that was, um, absolutely terrifying because I was in, we had a, a, a Toyota a Corolla at that time and I was in the Toyota with the, with our cats and I was watching all this from my rear view mirror and it was absolutely terrifying to watch because I thought, you know, my husband might be dead. <laughs> when I run back to the truck, I might find him dead. Thank God he was okay. But that kind of started a sequence of events um, that caused us an incredible amount of stress um, as soon as we got to L.A. We were originally going to go back to the Bay Area, um, but, you know, for um, several reasons we ended up staying in L.A. I'm not going to get into that, but, yeah, so, but that, again, that caused a huge sequence of events that um, um, started to uh, make our life just really difficult and stressful. And so, um, after we were in LA for about, I guess, a year, uh, my symptoms really started to get bad. They really started to get worse, and it was starting to affect my ability to work. Um, I started teaching a boot camp when I was in LA, and we had to be there at 5.15 in the morning. And I was used to that schedule through most most of my career. I had clients that were at 5 o'clock, 5.30 in the morning. So it wasn't unusual for me to have to adhere to a schedule like that. So um, I started to um, experience extreme insomnia to the point I wasn't falling asleep till 1 or 2 in the morning, which for me was very unusual because usually by 9 o'clock at night I was out, you know, especially getting up so early. Um, like 4.30 most mornings, um, by 9 o'clock I was done. And so that was starting, you know, to really impact my ability to um, get up and go teach the boot camp. And I was starting to show up late. Um, and it was becoming very hard for me, you know, to have the energy and the stamina to teach the class because obviously the it, the class is expecting you to have, be a, have a lot of energy and be able to, um, you know, uh, do some of the exercises with them as demonstration, and that was becoming almost impossible. So I had to quit. 
And I, I knew something is seriously wrong. Um, at that time, luckily I had insurance through my job and I, I went to um, a couple doctors and they dismissed it, you know, as stress, you're just stressed out. Um, and I, and I just insisted, you know, something is wrong. Something is very wrong. Well, I had a chiropractor at that time that was actually a friend of mine and I was, you know, um, describing my symptoms to him. And he said, you know, that just sounds like a classic um, fibromyalgia symptoms. I really think that that's what you have. Well, at that time, um, I, I had gotten a new doctor, a new um, general practitioner, family doctor. And he, he was the first doctor that actually wanted to figure out what was going on, you know, and he listened to me when I said that something was wrong. And one thing I think that did help me out a little bit was the fact that I, I was in shape and I was fit. And they couldn't tell me, oh, it's because you're overweight and you don't take care of yourself. Um, which, you know, for people that do deal with that, um, that I can't imagine how frustrating that is for you. And I did, you know, mention that in one of my past videos. But um, either way, I think that was something that did help me because I felt like they took me a little more seriously because they're like, well, this girl obviously takes care of herself. She eats healthy. She exercises. I mean, you know, um, we really can't tell her that her lifestyle could be causing these symptoms. So um, I told him that my, my chiropractor felt strongly that it could be fibromyalgia and um, he felt, and, and he agreed with that. He said, you know, I, I think that could be it too. Um, you know, we've taken blood tests and we've done whatever we can, um, you know, to try to figure out what's, what's wrong with you and what imbalances you might, you know, be having with your neurotransmitters, what have you to make you feel this way. He said, um, I, I, I think, that could be it so let's try to start treating you for that um well that year when we were trying to figure out um i guess it was a, more like a year and a half but when we were trying to number one figure out what's wrong and number two to figure out the um appropriate treatment plan for me was um one of the worst years of my life that's when my symptoms were at their worst i had to stop working and go on disability and I went on several different medications and they started me on um, antidepressants, um, which is not uncommon, you know, for people with um, fibromyalgia symptoms. And the side effects of the antidepressants were just too severe for me. And they actually made me depressed and I'm not a depressed person at all. And so they took me off of those um, medications. They put me on Lyrica, which I, I did do a whole video on my channel, my experience with Lyrica. Um, you guys want to check it out. Um, and, um, I had horrible side effects with Lyrica, um, suicidal thoughts, what have you. But even though during that time I was going through an extreme depression, um, and I, I did want to die and I would pray every night that God would take my life in my sleep because the symptoms were just getting so severe and my life was just ruined by it. And, um, I could barely get out of bed. I was getting out of bed at like two, three in the afternoon and here I, you know, used to getting up at 5, 5.30 or up or 4.30 and having really productive days and, you know, active days. And, and to go to that um, was just absolutely devastating. And I wanted to die because I felt so hopeless that, you know, we're not going to be able to find any type of treatment. A number of, at first, when I didn't know what was wrong with me. Um, and then when I did find out and we, you know, were trying experiment with, with different medications, um, during that, that time period was just such a hopeless time, but I didn't like want to kill myself. It was more, I just wanted, you know, to die in my sleep and not wake up. But Lyrica like made me suicidal, um, if that makes any sense, but I wasn't like suicidal. Um, so, um, so anyway, uh, finally, um, we, after experimenting with um, the treatments that were, I guess, FDA approved for fibromyalgia, um, we experimented with uh, tramadol and that was, um, that was it. That medication um, basically um, gave me my life back. And because um, tramadol, you know, does have um, some antidepressant components, you know, as well as the, the pain relieving um, components, but, 
anyway, that um, turned out to be a very, very effective medication for me. I've been on it ever since. Um, for the most part, I've been able to keep my doses low. I haven't had to really increase that much over the past 10 plus years. And um, even though, you know, I was able to finally find the appropriate treatment, obviously it didn't, doesn't mean the battle is over. Um, I am able to have a somewhat functional life right now, but I certainly can't do nearly what I used to be able to do. And um, even after I was able to get some relief um, from the medication, I still was very depressed because I, I couldn't go back to work, you know, at the same capacity that I was able to work before. I couldn't do a lot of the same activities that I was able to do before. Um, I just couldn't have the life that I had anymore. And that was incredibly difficult for me to accept um, that this is my reality and um, this is how my life is going to be now. And I have to find, um, you know, a, a new way, you know, to live my life. Um, a lot of people call it a new normal. And I also did a video on how, um, titled How to Find Your New Normal um, and how I, you know, went through that process. And it was able to, for the most part, come to terms with my condition. But um, even now, it's still, I still have my days where I get angry. I still have my days when I get frustrated. Um, and one thing that for me has been a big challenge, and I'm sure a lot of you, um, can relate is that most of us will really try to push through the pain. We really try to put on a brave face. We really try to um, be some somewhat productive and um, try to have something of a life and, you know, to not complain too much to our loved ones and the people that are around us. You know, we just, we don't want to be, you know, that person who's always complaining and giving into the pain and staying in bed all day, even though there are some days we do need to do that and we shouldn't feel guilty about it. Um, but many of us really, we really do try to push through so we can have something of a life and also be there to some capacity for our loved ones. Well, um, the downside or the catch 22 to that is that when people see that you're, you know, able to get up and do some activities, do chores around the house, you know, you seem to be in a, a good mood most of the time, they, they feel like nothing's wrong or it can't be that bad. Not realizing that we are hiding our pain and we are pushing through a lot of pain because we don't want to put that burden on our loved ones. You know, we want to try to minimize it as, as much as we can. And that can work against us because uh, people won't have as much compassion because, again, we don't look sick. We look just fine. You know, um, that's why the title of my book, You Look Just Fine to Me, um, because that's that's basically um, a, a statement that a lot of us hear. You look fine to me. You don't look sick. And so um, and and the. Uh, the flip side to that is that if we do give into the pain and we do stay in bed all day and we do what we really wish we would like to do, people say, oh, well, you need to get up. You need to push through the pain. You need to try to be productive. You know, it'll help you. And then we get up and we, we do that. Well, we, well, for those of us that do make that choice and people say, well, you look fine. I mean, you know, you're able to do certain activities throughout the day. And so <laughs> sometimes we can feel like it's just like a lose-lose situation for us. Um, because there's nothing that's obviously wrong with us. And for me, I have come to the conclusion or um, I'm at peace with the fact that people are not going to understand what I go through. They're not going to understand my pain, but they have to accept it. And if they can't accept it, that's their problem. It's not my problem. Um, I know that I'm not faking it. I know that I'm not doing this so I can get out of not working full time or so I can be lazy all day. Um, and I think it's just ludicrous when people make statements like that. And granted, there are people out there that, that do milk um, any type of illness they might have or might even lie that they have an illness, you know, because um, they do want to be lazy. But that, I would say that's probably less than 1% of people that um, that, that do, um, suffer from chronic illness. Um, most of us, 
would love to be able to go back to work full time, would love to have the energy and the stamina uh, to have a full productive schedule. And when people make comments like, well, I wish I could work part time or I, w I, I wish I could, you know, um, lay in bed or rest as much as you do. Well, you know, wake up in my body one day and then, you know, you can have that. <laughs> and if you woke up in my body one day, you would hate your life and you probably would never get out of bed. And that's, you know, that that's um, always how I want to respond. You know, sometimes I, I do. I will respond that way. But, um, but you know, I, I I do try to hold my tongue or whatever. But for me, I'm, I'm lucky because for the most part, the people in my life um, are, you know, compassionate to it. Although, you know, they can still say hurtful things and do hurtful things um, and still again, they just really don't understand um, how severe my pain is every day. They don't, don't understand um, how much I hide and push through. Um, so, of course, you know, the people around me um, will sometimes say insensitive things. And, it, and sometimes it's not even the fact that they're insensitive or, or mean people, but they also get frustrated because they, they, don't, they don't understand. Um, they feel powerless because there's nothing they can do um, to help me or, or make it go away. And I think some of that, you know, um, frustration will come out in other ways, like, you know, like not showing um, the amount of compassion, you know, that we wish they would show. And so, um, but for me, you know, the way that I get through each day is um, number one, exercise. I cannot stress how important it is to exercise. And that's why on this channel, I've tried to do a lot of really, really simple at-home workouts that you can do so you can get some activity in, even if it's something very simple. Um, and you can go to my beginner playlist to find these, this, um, these uh, list of videos and, and workouts that you can do. Um, always check with your doctor, physical therapist, you know, orthopedic doctor, rheumatologist, whoever you see, make sure that um, it's appropriate for you to do the type of um, exercises and programs that I have available. But the sorry guys for the skip. Um, my phone ran out of um, room. The, the it ran out of storage room, so I had to stop and delete <laughs> some stuff that I had on my phone. Um, so, but anyway, back to what I, what I was saying. Um, that I. I you know, um, have a beginner playlist that you can go to to find simple exercises um, that you can do. Um, but the, begin the beginner playlist is probably the best place for you to start because I do have exercises on my channel, workouts that are a little more advanced that might not be appropriate for those of you just getting started and if you have extreme limitations. Um, but yeah, exercise, of course, is um, one thing that helps me tremendously. Um, stretching, regular stretching. Um, eating healthy, you know, trying to um, avoid foods that cause inflammation, um, foods that are a uh, lot that are really high in sugar. Um, I eat plenty of uh, fruits, vegetables, foods that are that are going to have a lot of nutrients to feed my body and help my and it will help your body function at, at its optimum uh, potential. Another um, another thing that helps me is. Um, my, how I deal with stress. Uh, unfortunately, um, for most of us, we cannot avoid stress in our life. Although stress is one thing that exacerbates our symptoms, unfortunately, but we, we can't avoid it, you know, um, for most of us. And so for me, the way that I deal with stress um, makes a big difference um, by meditating and also trying to consciously um, have self-control over my thoughts and my anxiety when I'm going through a really stressful period of my life. Um, instead of panicking and freaking out, just trying to take a, a calm approach, you know, to a challenging situation, seeing what I can do, um, being honest with what I'm capable of doing and just going from there. And, um, honestly, for the most part, everything turned, um, seems to work out in the end, but certainly, um, my life is <laughs> not stress-free. Um, it's far from it, but yeah, and the and the exercise also helps a lot with anxiety and with stress relief as well. Um, another thing too that helps me is um, keeping people that are um, toxic, I guess, um, and that lack compassion or or will 
um, treat me in a really negative way. I, I, I keep at a distance or I just cut them out of my life. Um, you just have to be really, really picky of who you allow to be in your inner, inner circle, who, who you allow yourself to be close to and um, to be a, a significant part of your life because you want to be surrounded by people who are going to be compassionate and understanding. And you want to try to, um, you, you, you want to do the best you can to try to control that. I know sometimes it's hard because um, we might live with family members um, that lack compassion and they might make snide, hurtful remarks to us and, and we don't have the financial means to move out or what have you. I know that can be very difficult. Um, but, you know, the only thing that um, that I can say is that it's, it's not your problem, it's their problem. Um, you know, you know that, that this is real for you. You know you're not faking it just to get pity or attention. Like, you know. And you just have to be confident, you know, in yourself that, that this is their issue. It's not your issue. And But again, it doesn't mean that it's not painful. It doesn't mean that it, it doesn't hurt. Another thing, too, that could be very beneficial um, that I have done in the past and I, I want to start doing again is um, seeing a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Um, if you have insurance, you know, and you can, um, you, you're you able to see um, a mental health expert, but someone to talk to just about how your illness emotionally affects you, um, affects your relationships, what have you, just someone that um, can give you um, good sound advice, someone that um, will be compassionate, unbiased, um, what have you. So I think that's something that is really has been helpful to me in the past and could be really beneficial to a lot of us. Um, also, if I have access to a hot tub, I will absolutely use a hot tub um, on a regular basis if I can. Um, as I mentioned in my last uh, Planet Fitness video, they have massage chairs there and I use those on a regular basis. If you have a gym that has the type of amenity, use those massage chairs because it will help. So those are things that I do, you know, that help me to get through um, my illness on a daily basis. So, but anyway, I hope this really helped some of you that are... Um, you know, going through this uh, as well, or, you know, maybe you're in the beginning um, phases where you don't really know what's wrong with you, and you're wondering if maybe it could be fibromyalgia. Um, you know, again, you know, um, your doctor is the only one that can diagnose you, but perhaps you're having similar symptoms as me, and it's something that you really need to explore with your doctor. So, um, but yeah, so I just wanted to share my story and, um, you know, what I went through and, and how I deal with it. So, all right. Well, thank you so much for your time and attention. I always appreciate it. If you really enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Remember, take care of yourself, protect yourself physically and emotionally. Don't forget your health is your most valuable asset. Invest in it. Bye -bye.